an update on the Hyman? Will he be is he healthy enough to travel? Yes, we expect him to be at the um, airport with us at three o'clock, and you know, the, looks like he'll be able to play um, tomorrow. So we were just asking Sam about his day, and I think he said he got a text from Zach around four. I guess if as if there's a player you're sure is going to be ready, is it is it Sam Gagne? <laughs> Oh, oh. Um, about, Just in terms of maybe not knowing whether he was going to play or not, but he's he's been through so much. Oh, Sam has been through so much, and uh, yeah, yesterday was he's going to be in and out, and um, yeah, no, he's a good hockey player. He's had a pretty good season this year, and um, yeah, so it was nice to see him step up. What would you like to see maybe in those five minutes where you guys look like you're in control of the game, and then it kind of slipped away from you? Is there something you could do, or is, or is that just something that you, you looked at that and said? happens sometimes well what does happen we didn't give up a scoring chance until that goal yeah. we gave up two scoring chances and they and this makes it sound like a, it's on the goaltender the goaltender had no uh, chance on those goals um, but overall defensively we got a two goal lead that's how we want to play uh, we made two mistakes on our um, on the breakouts one was a positional thing one's more of a skill thing and um, both of them led to goals against but up until then, it was, it was perfect. That's how we wanted to play. Um, sometimes it happens, and we're obviously going to address how those mistakes did occur and how we can try and eliminate those. But overall, that, that last 20 minutes, it was, it was great until that, you know, five seconds before they scored. Um, I want to ask you also about, uh, did you know Zach Hyman before coming here, and what, it, what has been your impression of him since you've gotten here? Um, I didn't know him personally. Um, knew people who knew him, and I've only heard good, positive things about what a hardworking guy, good, smart hockey player, outstanding teammate, and um, everything I've seen so far is confirmed of um, my impressions coming in here. He does all the things that you want, maybe some of your younger guys to do. Go to the net, play hard in those hard areas, you know, sacrifice. I guess, is that a good example for some of the other guys? It, okay, this is how you score goals. Go to the net, and that's where the puck will end up sometimes. Um, absolutely. Um, it's it's hard scoring goals. you got to go there. you got to pay a price. And it's also not only paying a price, but you need a, a skill set to not have your sk or stick tied up. And that's one of just having awareness of where your stick is, but also awareness of your body and where your opponent is. Um, so there's a lot of things rather than just saying, go to the net. That's that's oversimplifying it. Um, and it's not fair to the goal scorers like Zach who are able to find a way to score goals. And so it's not just that he's willing to go to the net. He is. He pays a price and he um, gets punished for it with um, some sticks and cross checks and stuff like that. But there's a lot of skills into um, how he actually gets that puck in the net. So Nugent Hopkins and Gagne both in their time were Nugent's first overall, Gagne was a high first round pick. And now we fast forward however many years and Gagne's, you know, he's on the fourth line, he's popping in the odd goal, Nugent's found a niche here. So, I mean, I guess my question is, do we know what, we think we know what these guys are when they get drafted and when they're young. Uh, how often are we right as to the player they turn out to be? That's, um, that's difficult. That's probably more of a management question um, because they see the players right from day one when they're drafted and their comparables and what they do in the American League and move up to the NHL and do they start on the third line or, you know, there's so many variables. Um, and you, we were just talking about Zach Hyman who was, you know, was never supposed to make the NHL. And, um, you know, I don't know exactly his background, but um, I'm going to – I think he was a late bloomer, and he's now he's a, a really good NHL player. And there's been numerous players who are going to be stars and um, just have a little cup of coffee in the NHL. So I I don't really can't really answer that question of some guys make it and there's surprises, but um, I don't know the percentages. So you're telling me when you first went to Erie and coached Connor McDavid, you said, "I'm not sure." <laughs> Well, you know the you know the ones that are going to be, but <laughs> but even is a star in the um, a junior. You don't know that he's going to look at the bracket. There's you, you, you're, yeah, but like even Connor, he dominated, and to say that he was going to dominate 
the NHL like he's doing right now, you know, it's, you know, it's, some might have assumed it, and some obviously would have had questions. Everyone knew that he was going to be a really good player. Right. How good? That's, that's up to um, a lot of variables. One, work ethic, commitment, um, doing it, um, you know, throughout your career. And obviously he had the talent, and it was evident in, in, uh, in junior, but he stuck with it, where some guys maybe don't stick with it or – just get frustrated that it's going to be hard. Um, you know, there's so many things, but um, yeah. And then there's surprises. We talk about Debrinket or Hyman or numerous players that um, find their niche somehow in the NHL. Chris, do you find first rounders, if they figure, or the fan figures every first rounder is going to be a goal scorer because he's in the first round, eventually the player sometimes has to look in the mirror too and say, I know I was the first rounder, but if I want to stay in the league, this is the player I got to be. And that's, those sort of players still end up playing 15 years or so because they realize I'm not a scorer like I was in junior. Um, yeah, well, I, my experience with that and just hearing that story about finding a different role is um, Ian LaPerriere in uh, Philadelphia, talking to him and about finding a role. and um, You know, a very offensive player in junior, and he found out that he had to change his game. And what a hard-nosed, committed defensive player. That's his staple, and he was pretty good at it. Um, but he said that if he didn't make that commitment and then make that change, he never would have done that. Um, other players just stick with it and maybe don't change their game, and they fall out and don't get into the NHL. But sometimes they just stay and keep their identity, and they get a break, and they get some confidence, and then then they progress. There's just so many um, variables, and it's just not uh, one one story for every player. How are you looking at Broberg? You're, te- you're winning the game, so you're not changing your defense. But he's not playing, and he's a young player. So how, you're a coach. Whoops. How does that how does that work? Um, no, that's a very difficult um, situation to handle. Uh, right now, he is our seventh defenseman. Um, and it's difficult to, one, it's difficult to use a seven defenseman rotation. Just uh, the having guys together as pairs, the communication, the chemistry that they develop, that's, that's important. Um, and also the flow of the game. And like, there's going to be a time when Brower gets his opportunities. He hasn't had an opportunity with me. Um, you know, he's got into two games and played I believe it was six and seven minutes each of those games. So for a defenseman to come in and show what he's got in that, in that little limited time, that's not fair for him. Um, and there will be a time whether it's somebody's not performing well, not playing, we want to make that change, and then he is in our top six, or somebody gets injured and he gets in. But um, right now I think it's a, definitely it's important to have seven quality defensemen in the NHL. You see at the NHL deadline how teams are always adding depth. Um, we feel good about our the guys that we have, and um, like I said, I, he'll he'll get his opportunity. Do you know what kind of what, are you, what he is as a player? Do you have any idea? Um, I haven't seen it with my eyes. I've I've heard about it. Um, I know how good of a skater he is. He's a good defensively, um, really good stick. Uh, can make a good first pass. Um, not going to be on your first unit power play, but a guy that closes space and makes it hard for the opponent just because of his his reads and his skating and, and his stick. But like you said, if when you only play so few minutes, then you're afraid of making a mistake probably. Oh, and, absolutely. And defensemen absolutely. And it's magnified, defense, it's magnified the for the defenseman. It's magnified for the defenseman because it's – Unfortunately, usually coaches are often looking for a mistake to make a change. Um, whether that's on the fourth line or the five, six, seven defensemen, whatever it is. Because um, these players, it is such a fine line on who helps you win and which guy doesn't. Um, and one coach sees it one way and another coach sees it another. It's, it's very difficult. So, but. I don't know. I think uh, 
it can be frustrating for the player not having the opportunity to play, but you know there there will be a time that we he'll have that opportunity. Here.